good evening to you. We're so happy to have you here with us tonight. Are you excited? Can you believe it's Christmas Eve? Yeah? Are you guys excited? Yeah, I'm excited too. I was kind of, y'all sound kind of sleepy. Maybe all the, the Christmas shopping and all of the busyness has kind of got you down, but I promise you tonight, this Christmas Eve service is going to be exactly what you need to pick you up, all right? And so let's just kind of put away all the busyness and all the hecticness of uh, what has been going on, and let's just try to focus on worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ and enjoying a good time of fellowship. So I got a Christmas present early. Yeah, right before I walked out of the door, and you know it's our candlelight service, and look, Kara gave me an early Christmas present, and what you might not know about me, I love Twinkies. Now, y'all know I've been slimming down recently, so I had to give up Twinkies, but I still love the smell, and I understand I can smell this candle that smells like Twinkies as much as I want, and I won't gain any, any weight. So I think that's a pretty good Christmas gift. And so she gave it to me early, and I said, can I bring it to the Christmas Eve service, to the candlelight service, and light it and use it? And she said, yeah. All right, so I'm, I'm going to open it. I'm cracking the seal on it right now. All right, I'm going to light this. Well, you'll do the honors for me. You'll light it for me, Brother Sherlin. Oh, yes. Oh, what a wonderful smell. Wonderful, wonderful smell. All right, so I'm going to put my Twinkies candle right there. All right, why don't you stand? And Christmas is a time of excitement. Christmas is a time of joy. And so I hope you're ready to sing your heart heart out this evening. We're going to sing Joy to the World.
a reason to celebrate because long ago in Bethlehem, those angels announced that the birth of the Messiah had taken place. All right, let's clap.
And you can be seated. You can sit down on this next one if, if you promise to still sing. So this is a song I kind of want to introduce you to. And we're going to use this later on tonight when we light the candle. So I want you to kind of learn it here. And I'll miss my cue, so let me restart. And I know Kara's delighted because whenever I mess up singing like this, she always likes to remind me of this time when I used to lead music at Aruka Baptist Church. And I sang Healing Rain. And some of you might have been there in that service. And the song cuts off, and I kept right on going. I didn't realize the song left. She was just a little thing. And so we had the handshaking time back then. And after that, she runs up on stage. Little thing. You have any, how old would you have been, Carrie, you know? Like six. She comes up on stage. She's like, Daddy, you really messed up. And it wasn't practice either. She wanted to make sure I knew that was the real thing. You really blew it. You really. So you could come up later afterwards and tell me, yeah, you messed up this song too. All right. But I love this song. And we're going to sing it again at the end. Oh, Jesus, Son of God, so full of grace and truth, the Father's saving word, so wonderful are you. The angels long to see, and prophets search to find the glory we have seen revealed. But who will understand? And you came onto your own, but who will recognize? Your birth was prophesied for you.
So, so far, so good? All right, very good. I thought one of the best things that we could do tonight is read the Christmas story. And so we're going to do it responsively. So that means I'll read a verse, and then you will read a verse with Sherlin. And we're going to start in Luke chapter 1. When Mary found out that she was going to give birth to Jesus. So, when the verses come up on the screen, I'll read the part that's gray. You and Sherlyn, you'll read the verse, the parts that are white. So, we'll be looking at Luke chapter 1, 26 through 56. And we'll be looking at several of the different passages. We'll look at Luke chapter 2. We'll look at Matthew chapter 2 as well. Tonight we'll start with Luke 1 in verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, and the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth his son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. And then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste, into the city of Judah. And entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believe, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord. And my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaid. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. 
he that showed strength with his arm, he hath scattered proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats, and exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich hath sent empty away. He hath hoped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. And he spake to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. And Mary abode with her about three months, and returned to her own house. At this time, I'd like to invite Miss Jayanna Ben to come and bless our hearts with a special tonight. Let's stand again.
Zachariah Tamby to come and, and encourage us to have ourselves a very Merry Christmas. Frank Sinatra got nothing on you there, like that. Yeah, have yourself a merry little Christmas. All right, we're going to do some more responsive reading. This time we look at the shepherds. So there won't be, we, we're not going to have like a sermon per se tonight, but we will have a gospel presentation. But this, I thought it'd be nice for us just kind of as a church family, just to kind of read the Christmas story together. You enjoying this? It's nice, right? It's good to be together on Christmas Eve night and just remind ourselves of what we are celebrating. So we looked at Luke chapter 1 and we saw where Mary uh, was told that she was going to give birth to the Messiah. And we read that beautiful song known as the Magnificat, my soul doth magnify the Lord. And now we're going to read in Luke chapter 2. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of the lineage of David, 
to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while there were, the, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, late lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, and as it was unto them. Amen. Let's stand once again. Somebody over here.
Emmanuel, God with us. of reading for the evening. It's from Matthew chapter 2. Incidentally, do you know where the first mention of worship is in the New Testament? It is in Matthew chapter 2. We're getting ready to read it. Jerusalem, saying, 
Where is he that is born King of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not thou the least among the princes of Judah? For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he said to, to them, Bethlehem, and said, Go search diligently for the young child, and when he have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they depart into their own country another way. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night, and departed into Egypt. And was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth, and sent forth, and slew all the children that were born in Bethlehem, in all the coast thereof, from two years and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, In Ramah was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping, and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted, because they are not. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeareth in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and go into the land of Israel, for they that are dead which sought the young child's life. You know, the, the wise men, they were seeking for this king of Israel. They were seeking Jesus. And you know, what I think we learn from the story of the wise men is that everyone who is seeking God, they need directions. They need directions in order to find God. Now, with the wise men, you remember their, their first direction was the star. And that brought them from wherever, how far away. We know they were from the east. It brought them to Jerusalem. And you know, in much the same way, creation can declare much about God to us. Psalm says that the heavens declare the glory of God. And so God has given us witness of himself just in creation. We look at the stars. We look at the beauty of a sunrise or sunset or, you know, we are very much closer to our human bodies, but our, our bodies are amazing. When you look at your eyes and your fingers, these things declare that there is a God. And so in the same way, the, the wise men, they looked up and they saw the star and that brought them to Jerusalem. But they needed something else to get them closer. See, the star only got them to Jerusalem where they went and went asking, hey, where, where is he that's born king of the Jews? 
Now, it was when they went to Herod that there were some scribes there, and we just read it. They knew the prophecy from Micah chapter 5, verse 2, where it says that in Bethlehem, he that should reign over all would be born. And so they told them, well, the Messiah is supposed to be born in Bethlehem. It's interesting to me that none of them went to Bethlehem to try to find the Messiah, but the wise men did. And then as they went, the star appeared again, and they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And it says it came and stood over where the child was. But you see, the star creation, that that only got them so far. What they needed to get precisely where they needed to be with Jesus was the Word of God. That's what they needed. And that is what tells us how we can get close to Jesus today. You know, Mary was told that she would give birth to the Savior. She was told that He would save the people from their sin. And the Bible explains to us how it is that we can find that gift of salvation. It tells us that we are all sinners. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It explains to us in Romans 6.23 what the penalty of that sin is. And that is the wages of sin is death. Now, often when we think about death, we think about the graveyard, but I want you to understand that the death that comes from sin is much more severe, much more detrimental than physical death, though that is part of it. But Revelation speaks of something called the second death, and that is the penalty of sin. It's to die a second time spiritually and to spend eternity in hell. That's what is spoken of in Revelation as the second death. And so we find in the Bible that we have a very big problem. We need a Savior. We need to find our way to Jesus. We're sinners, and the wages of that sin is death. But then the second part of Romans 6.23, praise the Lord. It says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, the Bible tells us how we can make our way to Jesus, the gift of God, and how we can be saved. Romans 10, 9, and 10 tells us that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Salvation is as simple as that. You know, as you talk with people today and if you listen to social media and YouTube and other things, I mean, depending on, there's some good things out in these areas too. But popular consensus seems to think that the Bible teaches that it's almost like the naughty and nice list. You know what I mean? If you do good things, then you go to heaven. And if you do bad things, then you go to hell. A lot of people have that conception. They think that that's what the Bible teaches. But that's not what the Bible teaches at all. What the Bible teaches us is that we're all on the naughty list. Amen? We are all sinners. I told you Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.10 tells us there is none righteous, no, not one. We are all sinners. We're all on the naughty list, if you will, right? None of us measure up to God's standard of holiness. And that's why Jesus came. He did measure up. Amen. Jesus lived a perfect life. He grew up. He didn't stay a baby in a manger. He grew up and he went to the cross and he bled and he died on that cross to pay the price for our sin. He was buried in a borrowed tomb, but hallelujah, three days later, he rose again. He was victorious over the grave. Why? Well, because he paid the price 100% for our sin, and it's proven by the fact that he walked out of the grave. That debt has been paid. It's done. And that gift is available to anybody who will receive it. John 1.12 tells us, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Now, if you just allow me just for the next few moments, I'd like to ask for every head to be bowed and every eye closed. 
If tonight you say, Pastor Jimmy, I know that I have accepted God's gift of salvation, and I can tell you with absolute certainty, I know that I'm saved, I know I'm on my way to heaven. Would you raise your hand as a testimony to that so I can see it? Just raise your hand. I know I've received God's gift of salvation. I know I'm on my way to heaven. Just raise it up nice and high. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Everybody's heads bowed. It's just me. Hallelujah. You can put your hand down. Now, I notice there's some hands that couldn't be raised. I want you to know that the Bible tells us that we can know for sure. Some people go through life and they feel like, oh, well, I I don't really know if I can be sure I'm going to heaven. And if that's what you think, that's because you're probably trusting your good works to somehow. You're, You're wondering if you're good enough. Let me tell you, you're not good enough. That's why Jesus came and died. And that's why you need to receive that gift of salvation. 1 John 5, 13 says, This is the record that I've given unto you, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. You see, Jesus wouldn't leave the glory of heaven and come all the way to earth and die on that cross for your sin and then make it so that you couldn't know for sure that you had received this beautiful gift. If you're here tonight and you say, Pastor Jimmy, I don't know for sure that I've received God's gift of salvation, but I would like to do that. Would you slip your hand up? No one looking around, just me. I've never done it, but I like to do that. Slip your hand up so I can see it. All right. You can put those hands down. In just a moment, we're going to have just a, a time of invitation. Brother Sherlin's going to sing for us. If you would like to talk with someone and just kind of solidify that tonight and make sure that you know that you've received this gift, make sure that you've received the greatest gift that's ever been given to mankind, I'm going to give you the opportunity to come during the invitation and talk with someone and settle that this evening. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this night, the special night you've given to us. And, Father, I thank you for even the things that we'll uh, we'll continue to be able to enjoy. But even now, Father, I pray uh, for those not sure, those that raised their hands, saying they weren't sure that they've received your gift of salvation. Father, I can't think of a better time uh, to receive the gift of salvation than right here on Christmas Eve night. Father, I pray that those who are not sure of their salvation, Father, that they might come and talk with someone this evening. Father, we pray that you would work in this time of invitation. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand to our feet, and we'll sing this song of invitation. If you'd like to talk to someone tonight, if you'd like to talk to someone tonight about how you can receive God's gift of salvation, you come as Brother Sherlin sings. Step out now. If you'd like to talk with someone You can know 100% for sure that you're on your way to heaven. Jesus paid it all. He paid it all on the cross. You just have to receive it. From the high and holy to a manger lowly, the greatest mystery the world has ever known. How you left your majesty to embrace humanity it awes and humbles me to be loved by a god so high what can i do but thank you what can i do but give my life to you hallelujah hallelujah what can i do but praise you every day make everything i do hallelujah 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 to the least and lowest you became as one of us in our grief and brokenness you suffered by our side from a cradle to the cross, rising up victorious, 
the Messiah Jesus, born to us on that holy night. What can I do but thank you? What can I do but give my life to you? can I do but praise you every day, make everything I do. Hallelujah, hallelujah, say this, and we normally do this um, during our invitation, if for any reason you didn't feel comfortable coming during that time, but maybe you're here tonight and you don't know for sure uh, that you're going to heaven, maybe this whole church thing, maybe it's new to you, uh, you know, maybe you've heard the things in the Bible, but maybe this thing about salvation, maybe you're really kind of curious about it, maybe you really don't know, but maybe as you heard me talk about salvation and the gift and stuff like that, maybe you're interested uh, I want you to always know that you can come and talk with me. You can come and talk with me after the service uh, this evening if you have questions about God's gift of salvation. Well, amen. You can stay seated for this next one.
Anybody got their cell phone on them tonight? Get your flashlight ready. He rose and conquered the 
You can have a seat. Everybody's candle lit. I 
adults, if you have young children next to you, please supervise them.
for you in the new year as well. Um, as you depart out of here tonight, um, the same girls that um, did, were part of our dance team, they'll be distributing some little treat bags. So please make sure that you get one of those on your way out. And again, I hope you have a very, very Merry Christmas. Let's pray. Father, we come before you. And Father, we just thank you for this special evening that you've given to us. And Father, even as we hold these candles and as we think about how you stepped into our darkness, I think about the passage in Isaiah, the people that were in darkness have seen a great light. Father, we thank you. We thank you for stepping into our darkness so that we could be saved. And Father, I pray that as we enjoy our family and as we enjoy the celebration tomorrow, uh, Father, that it just might be a time that would draw us even closer 
to you. And Father, that we might uh, go deeper in our relationship with you as we go through this time of year. Father, I pray that you would just dismiss us tonight uh, with your blessing, Father. And I pray that you would just bless every person that has come into attendance here tonight, those that might be watching on the live stream. Father, I pray that you just might bless each person, Father, and meet the needs that are represented in every life. Uh, Father, I pray that you would just uh, dismiss us now with your blessing. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.